My family's entire future was decided by a DNA test. Turns out, I'm my dad's real son, but my golden boy brother isn't, so I had him kicked out and now everything's falling apart. I'm Nick, 21M, and for as long as I can remember, I've always been the black sheep. My dad, Joe, never liked me, that much was clear. He ran this small HVAC business that my grandpa started years ago. But here's the thing. The business doesn't really belong to him. It's in some trust that my grandpa set up. And it's only supposed to go to the biological grandkids. Basically, my dad works there but doesn't have any real power, and he's always kind of resented that. Guess he's not good with money or something. So my grandpa didn't trust him with the business finances. Now, here's where things get even messier. I've got this half-brother, Max, 23M, and he's always been the golden child. My dad treats him like he can do no wrong, while I've always been the one blamed for everything. Doesn't matter what it is, it's somehow my fault. I never really understood why until recently. So three years ago, my dad found these old diaries my mom, Sarah, kept from years ago. And let me tell you, it was like my whole world turned upside down when he found them. Apparently, my mom had this long affair that no one knew about. Her lover? Some dude who died in a car crash about 12 years ago. And here's the kicker. Oh, I said I wasn't going to use that. Sorry. This affair lasted a while, like years. My dad's been sitting on this info ever since he found out. And it was a whole screaming match between them for days. At first, I thought it was just their usual fights. But then my dad dropped the bomb on me and Max. He basically tells us both, we need to do DNA tests. Like what? Max and I were just sitting there, stunned. Turns out my grandpa, the one who started the business, hated my mom because he always suspected she was fooling around. He was convinced that one of us, maybe both of us, wasn't my dad's real kid. So now my dad's all fired up because if it turns out either of us isn't his kid, that person gets nothing. Nada. No claim to the family business, no inheritance, nothing. And I could just see it in his eyes. He was dead set on me being the one to get kicked out. He's always treated me like I didn't belong, like I wasn't part of the family. I used to think it was just me being paranoid, but this whole DNA test thing proved it. The only reason he cared about this at all was because of the business and the money. Otherwise, he wouldn't have given a damn about whether I was his or not. So we all go down to this lab for the tests. The car ride there was probably one of the worst moments of my life. My dad was completely quiet, just staring straight ahead like he already knew what the results would say. Max was sitting next to me in the back seat, grinning like the smug asshole he's always been, like he was sure I'd be the one getting kicked out of the family. I just sat there, staring out the window, trying to wrap my head around the fact that my entire future was riding on a damn DNA test. We get the tests done, and the waiting was hell. They told us we'd get the results in a few days, but those days felt like years. I barely slept, just lying awake, thinking about all the ways this could go wrong. And honestly, I didn't know which would be worse, finding out I wasn't my dad's kid and getting kicked out, or finding out Max wasn't his kid and watching my dad's world crumble. Finally, the day came. We went to the lawyer's office to get the results. My heart was pounding the whole time. The lawyer opens up the envelope, and I swear it felt like the whole room went silent. Then he reads the results. I'm my dad's biological son. And Max? He's not. The whole room just froze. My dad's face went pale, and Max just stared, his jaw dropping like he couldn't believe it. I couldn't help but feel a twisted sense of satisfaction. After all these years of being treated like crap, I was the real son. Not Max. The golden boy. But here's where things get even crazier. Turns out the house we live in is also part of this whole trust deal. It was only supposed to go to the biological grandkids, which means it's mine now. My dad had always assumed Max would get everything, but now, legally, Max gets nothing. The business, the house, all of it. It's mine. On the drive back home, my dad didn't say a word. Max, though, kept running his mouth, talking crap like, this isn't fair, and there must have been a mistake. He was acting like the test results were some kind of joke. But my dad? He looked broken. I've never seen him like that before. He's always been this tough, distant guy, but now he looked like someone had ripped his whole life apart. That night, my dad tried to make things right. He came into my room, and I could tell he'd been crying. I've never seen my dad cry before, and it kind of freaked me out. He sat down on the edge of my bed and just started talking, saying he was sorry, that he'd messed up, that he wanted to fix things between us. He looked so desperate, like he was begging me to forgive him. But I couldn't. Not after everything. Not after the way he treated me my whole life. So I told him, if you really want to make it up to me, kick Max out. You were ready to kick me out if I wasn't your son, so do the same to him. My dad just stared at me, like he couldn't believe what I was saying. He started to argue, saying we could go to family counseling, that we could all try to fix this together. But I wasn't having it. I told him straight up, you were going to throw me out if I wasn't your kid. Now it's Max's turn. 
He cried some more, but eventually he agreed. That night, Max was kicked out of the house, and my dad was in tears the whole time. He didn't even yell or anything, just quietly told Max he had to go. Max was furious, obviously, but he didn't really have a choice. He packed up his stuff and left. And you'd think that after all of this, things would get better between me and my parents, right? Nope. If anything, things got worse. My dad's been walking around like a broken man ever since, and my mom? She's just been silent. Like, she hasn't said a word about any of this. It's like she's pretending none of this is happening, which honestly pisses me off even more. I don't even know what's next, but all I can say is, this family is beyond repair. So after Max got kicked out, you'd think things would chill out, right? Nope. If anything, it got more awkward around the house. My dad, Joe, was walking around like a ghost, barely speaking to anyone, and my mom, Sarah, was still silent, just pretending like none of this mess had happened. The house felt empty, even though I was still living there. I thought maybe kicking Max out would change something, but all it did was make my parents even more distant. The first few days after Max left, it was almost like everyone was holding their breath, waiting for something to happen. I could tell my dad was trying to figure out what to do next, but instead of talking to me like a normal person, he just stayed quiet. I knew he was hurting, but I wasn't exactly in the mood to comfort him. The guy had spent most of my life treating me like I didn't matter, and now I was supposed to feel sorry for him? Yeah, not happening. One night, about a week after Max left, my dad tried to have this big talk with me. He sat me down in the living room, looking like he hadn't slept in days. He kept fidgeting, like he didn't know how to start the conversation, which was weird, because my dad was always the type of guy who just said whatever was on his mind. Finally, he started talking, and honestly, it was kind of pathetic. He was like, Nick, I know I haven't been the best father, and I know things are complicated now, but I really want to fix this. He kept going on and on about how he wanted to rebuild our relationship and make things right. He even started tearing up, which threw me off because, like I said before, I've never seen my dad cry until this whole DNA mess. I let him talk for a while, but the more he talked, the angrier I got. I was just sitting there, listening to him say how sorry he was and how much he regretted everything, and all I could think was, why now? Why are you only sorry because Max isn't your kid? It felt like he didn't actually care about me, just about the fact that he couldn't rely on Max anymore. I couldn't shake the feeling that if the DNA test had gone the other way, I'd be the one out on the streets, and Max would still be the golden child. So, I cut him off. I looked him straight in the eye and said, you're only sorry because you need me now. You don't actually care about me. You never did. You only care about the business and the money. My dad looked like I'd slapped him across the face. He just sat there, stunned like he couldn't believe I was saying that. But it was the truth. I wasn't going to let him pretend like this was some heartwarming family reunion moment. It wasn't. He tried to argue, of course. He was like, no, Nick, it's not like that. I love you. I've always loved you. I just, I didn't know how to show it. Yeah, sure. He loved me so much that he spent years treating me like garbage while Max got all the praise. I wasn't buying it. I didn't even bother responding. I just got up and left the room. I couldn't sit there and listen to him try to rewrite history like that. It was too much. I went upstairs to my room and slammed the door. I could hear him downstairs pacing around, probably trying to figure out what to do next. But I didn't care. I was done with his fake apologies. After that, things got even more tense around the house. My dad stopped trying to talk to me altogether, which I was fine with, honestly. My mom still wasn't saying anything. She was just there like a statue. I started spending more time at work, trying to avoid being home as much as possible. The family business wasn't exactly my dream job, but at least it was a way to keep myself busy. That's when Max started calling me. At first, I ignored his calls. I mean, why would I want to talk to him? The guy had spent years treating me like dirt, and now that he wasn't the golden boy anymore, he suddenly wanted to reconnect? Yeah, no thanks. But he didn't stop. He kept calling and calling, leaving voicemails, sending texts. It was annoying as hell. One day, I finally gave in and answered. I figured I might as well hear what he had to say. The second I picked up the phone, Max went off. He was yelling about how unfair everything was, how he didn't deserve to be kicked out, how our parents were treating him like crap now. I let him rant for a bit, but then, he dropped a bomb. Max told me that our mom had cheated with more than one guy. Yeah, apparently the guy who died in the car crash wasn't the only one. There was another dude, some guy she worked with back in the day. And Max was threatening to tell our dad if I didn't help him get back in the house. I was floored. Like, I knew my mom wasn't a saint. But I didn't expect this. Max kept going, saying that he had proof, that he'd found more of my mom's old diaries and letters that basically confirmed she'd been screwing around with multiple guys. He said he'd kept quiet about it all these years because he didn't want to ruin the family, but now that he was out on his ass, he didn't care anymore. 
I didn't know what to say. Part of me wanted to call Max's bluff, but another part of me believed him. It explained a lot about why my dad was always so paranoid and why he treated me the way he did. Maybe he'd always suspected that none of us were really his kids. Max was like, look, Nick, I don't want to blow this thing up, but if you don't help me out, I'm telling dad everything. He'll kick mom out and this whole family is going to be destroyed. He was basically blackmailing me. I told him I'd think about it and hung up the phone. I sat there for a long time, just staring at the wall, trying to figure out what the hell I was supposed to do. Max had always been a jerk, but this was next level. He was willing to blow up our entire family just to get back at me for kicking him out. And the worst part? I didn't know if I even cared anymore. By the end of the night, I decided I wasn't going to play Max's game. If he wanted to tell our dad, fine, let him. I wasn't going to help him just because he had some dirt on our mom. If our family was going to fall apart, it wasn't my job to hold it together. And with that, I made up my mind. I wasn't going to answer Max's calls anymore. If he wanted to burn everything down, so be it. A few weeks after Max threatened me with that whole I'm going to blow up the family crap, things somehow got even worse. Like, I didn't think it was possible, but here we were. My dad, Joe, was still moping around the house like someone had died, and my mom, Sarah, was still silent as ever. I was doing my best to just stay out of it all, going to work, coming home, and keeping my head down. But of course, nothing ever stays quiet for long in this family. One night, I came home from work, and the house felt weird. Like, you know when you walk into a place and you can just feel something's off? That was the vibe. I heard my parents talking in the kitchen, but it wasn't their usual low-key arguing. It sounded serious, like they were trying to keep their voices down, but failing. My curiosity got the better of me, so I crept closer to the door, trying to hear what was going on. And that's when I heard it. My dad was yelling, you think I don't know? You think I'm an idiot? And my mom, finally, was talking back, her voice shaky. Joe, please, it was years ago. It doesn't mean anything now. My heart dropped. Max had done it. He told my dad about the other guy, the one my mom had been seeing behind his back. I felt a weird mix of emotions. Relief. Anger. Guilt. I mean, I knew Max was capable of doing it, but a part of me didn't think he'd actually go through with it. Now, here we were, and my dad was finding out that my mom had cheated on him with multiple guys. I didn't want to listen anymore, so I went upstairs to my room and shut the door. But even up there, I could still hear them yelling. My dad was shouting about betrayal and how he should have left her years ago, while my mom was sobbing, saying it was all in the past and that she loved him. It was brutal. Later that night, my dad came upstairs and knocked on my door. I wasn't in the mood to talk, but I opened it anyway. He stood there, looking more broken than I'd ever seen him, like he'd aged 10 years in one day. He didn't say much, just asked if I knew about the other guy. I didn't lie. I told him I found out when Max called me a couple weeks ago. He nodded, his face going pale, and then he said something that hit me hard. I never trusted your mom after that first affair. I didn't trust either of you boys, either. That's why I treated you the way I did. I just stood there, frozen. Like, yeah, I'd figured something like this was the reason, but hearing him actually admit it? That messed me up. My whole life I thought I wasn't good enough, that maybe if I worked harder or did better, my dad would finally accept me. But no. It was all because he never really believed I was his kid. I didn't know what to say, so I just stood there, staring at him. After a minute, he sighed and said, I'm sorry, Nick. I really am. I don't expect you to forgive me, but I needed you to know. And then he left, just like that. For the next few days, it was like walking on eggshells in the house. My dad stopped talking to my mom completely. He'd either be in his office or out at work, and she was always upstairs, locked in their bedroom. It was weird, but at the same time, I kind of felt like it was a long time coming. They should have divorced years ago, honestly. Then Max showed up. Yeah, after all the crap he pulled, he had the nerve to come back to the house. It was a Saturday, and I was just chilling in the living room, watching TV, when I heard a knock at the door. I opened it, and there he was, standing on the porch with this smug look on his face, like he hadn't just nuked our entire family. What the hell are you doing here? I asked, not even trying to hide the anger in my voice. Max shrugged like it was no big deal. I wanted to talk. Can I come in? No, I said, stepping outside and shutting the door behind me. We don't have anything to talk about. He rolled his eyes. Oh, come on, Nick. Don't be like that. Look, I didn't want to have to tell dad, but you left me no choice. You kicked me out, remember? I couldn't believe what I was hearing. You're really gonna stand there and act like you're the victim in all of this? Max sighed like he was tired of the conversation already. Look, it's not about that. I just want things to go back to the way they were. We were a family before all this, man. I couldn't help but laugh. A family? Are you serious? We were never a family. You were the favorite, and I was the one dad blamed for everything. You got whatever you wanted, and I was always the one left out. 
So don't give me that we were a family crap. Max's expression changed. He wasn't smug anymore. He looked pissed. You know what, Nick? Fine. I was the favorite, but at least I wasn't some bitter, jealous loser like you. That hit a nerve. I stepped closer to him. My fist clenched. Get the hell out of here, Max. You're not welcome here anymore. He smirked like he'd won some kind of victory. Fine, but don't be surprised when mom and dad end up splitting because of all this. You're just as much to blame as I am. With that, he turned and walked away, leaving me standing on the porch, seething. After he left, I went back inside trying to calm down, but his words kept echoing in my head. You're just as much to blame. Was he right? Had I played a part in tearing this family apart? I didn't want to believe it, but maybe there was some truth to it. Maybe if I hadn't pushed my dad to kick Max out, things wouldn't have gotten this bad. But then I remembered how they treated me, how they were ready to throw me out like I was nothing. Max wasn't innocent in all this. He'd been the favorite for years, and now that the tables had turned, he couldn't handle it. By the end of the night, I was drained. I didn't know what was going to happen next, but one thing was for sure. There was no going back to how things were before. This family was broken, and no amount of fake apologies or half-hearted attempts to fix it were going to change that. Update 2, things didn't calm down after Max's visit. In fact, it felt like everything was starting to unravel faster than ever. My dad was barely at home anymore. He'd leave early for work, come home late, and when he was here, he was just locked up in his office. My mom, Sarah, still wasn't talking to him, or to me for that matter. It was like she was just checked out. I guess when your whole life blows up, it's hard to know how to handle it, but still it was weird watching my parents fall apart like this. It felt like I was living with strangers, and honestly, I was starting to lose it too. It's not like I was ever close to my parents, but I wasn't expecting things to get this bad. The house was dead quiet all the time, and I couldn't shake the feeling that the whole situation was somehow my fault. Like maybe if I'd handled things differently with Max, or if I hadn't pushed so hard for him to get kicked out, maybe this wouldn't have blown up the way it did. But every time I started to feel guilty, I'd remind myself that they were ready to throw me out if I hadn't been my dad's biological son, so why should I care? But here's the thing. Caring or not, living in a house where everyone's pretending the other doesn't exist is pretty messed up. A couple weeks after Max's little visit, my dad came to me again, but this time he didn't look sad. He looked determined, and that's when I knew something was up. Nick, we need to talk, he said, standing in my doorway. I sighed, already tired of whatever conversation this was about to be. What is it now? He came in and sat down on the edge of my bed, like he was trying to figure out how to start. I've been thinking, he began, rubbing his hands together nervously, and I've decided to file for divorce. I sat up straighter. Wait, what? He nodded, his eyes still fixed on his hands. I can't do this anymore. Your mom. I can't forgive her for what she's done. I thought maybe I could, but I can't. There's too much damage. For a second, I didn't know how to respond. I mean, I wasn't shocked. This felt like it was bound to happen sooner or later, but hearing him actually say it was different. So that's it? You're just going to end it? My dad sighed, finally looking up at me. Yeah, I know it's a lot to take in, but it's the right thing to do. I've talked to a lawyer, and we'll get started on the paperwork soon. I wanted to tell you first. I didn't know what to feel. On one hand, I couldn't really blame him. My mom had lied to him for years, but on the other hand, this was going to be the end of whatever little bit of family I had left. Does mom know? I asked, already guessing the answer. He shook his head. Not yet. I'll tell her soon. I just... I wanted to make sure you were okay with it first. Was I okay with it? I mean, did it even matter if I was? It wasn't like I had a say in what happened between them. Still, the thought of my parents splitting up felt strange, even though things had been terrible for a long time. Yeah, I guess, I mumbled, not really sure how to express what I was feeling. My dad stood up and patted me on the shoulder, which felt weird and awkward. I'm sorry, Nick. I know this hasn't been easy for you. And then he left the room, leaving me sitting there, trying to process what was happening. Divorce. My parents were actually getting divorced. Part of me wanted to say good riddance, but another part of me felt, sad, I guess. I don't know. Maybe it was the finality of it all that got to me. The next few days were tense. I kept expecting my dad to drop the bomb on my mom, but he didn't. Instead, it was just more of the same. Silence, avoidance, everyone pretending like the house wasn't about to fall apart. I didn't know when he planned to tell her, and honestly, I wasn't sure I wanted to be around when it happened. And then, one night, it happened. I was in my room, trying to fall asleep, when I heard shouting from downstairs. My heart sank, and I knew instantly that my dad had finally told her. I couldn't make out everything they were saying, but I could hear enough. My mom was crying, screaming about how he couldn't do this, how she'd made mistakes, but she still loved him. My dad, though, wasn't backing down. He was shouting, too, yelling about betrayal and how he couldn't trust her anymore. 
It was ugly. Really ugly. I stayed in my room, listening to them tear each other apart, feeling like I should have done something, anything, but knowing there wasn't much I could do. After what felt like forever, the shouting finally stopped. I heard my mom sobbing as she ran up the stairs and slammed the door to their bedroom. The next morning, the house was even quieter than usual. My mom didn't come out of her room at all, and my dad was acting like nothing had happened. He sat at the kitchen table, drinking his coffee and reading the newspaper like it was just another day. I didn't know what to say to him, so I didn't say anything. I just grabbed some breakfast and left for work, trying to avoid any awkward conversations. But when I got home that night, things had escalated. My mom had packed up a bunch of her stuff. Her suitcases were sitting in the hallway, and she was standing by the front door, talking on the phone with someone. I don't know who she was talking to, but it sounded like she was making arrangements to leave. When she saw me, she quickly ended the call and wiped her eyes. Nick, I'm. I'm going to stay with your aunt for a while, she said, her voice shaking. I didn't know what to say. Okay, was all I could manage. She gave me a sad smile, then pulled me into a hug. I'm so sorry, honey. I know this is hard. But I'll still be around. We'll figure this out. I didn't hug her back. I just stood there, feeling numb, waiting for her to let go. When she finally did, she grabbed her bags and left without another word. And just like that, she was gone. After my mom left, it was just me and my dad in the house. It felt way emptier than it should have, like all the air had been sucked out of the place. We didn't really talk much after that night. He was still doing his thing, going to work, and pretending like everything was normal, but I could tell it wasn't. I mean, how could it be? I don't know if he was waiting for me to ask how I was feeling, or if he just didn't want to deal with it. But either way, we both just kind of avoided the subject. We barely even made eye contact in the kitchen, and the silence was heavier than it had ever been before. It wasn't long before Max decided to stir things up again. I swear, the guy's like a bad rash that just won't go away. One day I'm sitting at home after work, just trying to watch TV and forget about the fact that my family's falling apart, and I get a text from Max Max, we need to talk. I almost laughed when I saw it. Talk? About what? The dude had blown up our family, blackmailed me, and now he wanted to talk? I ignored the message at first, but then my phone started blowing up with more texts. Max, it's important. Max, I'm serious, Nick. Max, you can't ignore me forever. He was relentless. After about 10 messages, I finally gave in and called him. I figured I might as well get it over with and hear whatever crap he had to say. Nick, Max said, sounding way too casual for my liking. I've been thinking. Oh, this should be good, I said, my voice dripping with sarcasm. What do you want now, Max? He ignored my tone and continued. Look, I know things are bad between us, but you gotta understand, this whole thing wasn't my fault. I scoffed. Not your fault? You're the one who told dad about mom's other affair. You're the one who started this whole mess. Max sighed like he was the victim here. Yeah, but come on, Nick. Don't act like this family was perfect before that. I just... I don't know. I did what I had to do. I could feel my blood boiling. What you had to do? You ruined everything, Max. You threw us all under the bus because you were mad you got kicked out. Don't act like you're some innocent bystander. He didn't say anything for a second and I thought maybe, just maybe, he'd finally shut up. But nope, he kept going. I know, I know. But look, I have a plan. I rolled my eyes. A plan? Really? What kind of plan? Max sounded excited now, like he actually believed this was a good idea. We need to get mom and dad back together. I almost dropped my phone. What? Think about it, Nick. If we can get them to talk, to work things out, maybe things can go back to normal. We were a family once, right? Are you out of your mind? I couldn't believe what I was hearing. They're getting divorced, Max. It's over. There's no fixing this. But Max wasn't listening. He was already rambling about how we could stage some kind of intervention or family meeting, get everyone in the same room and force them to talk it out. He actually thought this was going to work, like some cheesy movie where everyone hugs at the end and everything's fine. I cut him off. Max, stop. Just stop. This isn't a movie, okay? You can't just force people to forgive each other and move on. Dad's done. He's already filed for divorce. And mom? She's living with Aunt Karen now. It's over. There was a long pause on the other end of the line. Finally, Max spoke again, but this time his voice was quieter, more serious. Nick, I don't want to lose this family. I didn't know what to say to that. Part of me wanted to laugh in his face. Like, really, Max? After everything you've done, now you care about the family? But another part of me felt, bad for him, I guess. As much as I hated to admit it, he wasn't the only one who'd lost something. We all had. Look, I said, my tone softer now. I get it. This sucks for all of us. But there's nothing we can do. It's too late. Max didn't respond right away, and for a second I thought maybe he'd finally understood. 
But then he said, well, I'm going to try anyway. And that's when I knew Max was a lost cause. He was stuck in this fantasy where everything could just magically be fixed if we all tried hard enough. I wished it were that easy, but life doesn't work like that. After I hung up, I felt this weird mix of emotions. Anger, sadness, frustration. All of it wrapped together. I didn't know how to move on from this. My parents were done, my mom had left, my dad was a wreck, and Max? He was delusional, thinking he could somehow put the pieces back together. The next few weeks dragged on, and things didn't really get any better. My dad stayed locked in his office most of the time, and I just kept going to work, trying to distract myself from the mess at home. But no matter how much I tried to ignore it, it was always there, hanging over my head like a dark cloud. One night, after another long day at work, I came home to find my dad sitting at the kitchen table. He looked up when I walked in and for the first time in a while, he actually spoke to me. Nick, he said quietly. I'm sorry. I froze. I wasn't expecting that. For what? For everything, he replied, looking down at his hands. I've messed up. I've made a lot of mistakes, and I know I can't fix all of them, but I'm trying. I just, I don't want us to end up like them, like me and your mom. I didn't know what to say. It was the most honest thing I'd heard from him in a long time, and it caught me off guard. I'd spent so much time being angry at him, blaming him for everything, that I didn't know how to respond when he actually showed some vulnerability. So I just nodded. Yeah, me neither. We didn't say much after that. It wasn't some big emotional moment or anything, but it was something. Maybe things weren't totally broken after all. 